Eric Stanford's Millennium Cross, which stands in the churchyard of St John's Devizes, is a marker of time. Each one of its beautifully carved panels reflects ten centuries of Devizes' history, a thousand years of development captured in white Portland stone, a solid reminder that over time nothing stays the same. After all, things happen. To everything there is a season, knowledge and understanding, industry and wealth, life and death. These are the things that conspire to change the world in which we live, whether we like it or not. And Devizes isn't immune from such change. In the last few years, the town's grown remarkably. Such has been the pace of expansion that some have been taken a bit by surprise, as if they've lost their footing on a place they thought could never change. From the earliest settlements to the rash of red-bricked housing estates, Devizes has shed its skin many times, and it's unlikely anyone can prevent it from doing so again in the future, however hard they try. But how come Devizes looks like it does? What encouraged its initial development? What created its wealth? And how did the decisions made by our ancestors affect the look and feel of the place we see today? In Developing Devizes, we look at what makes this market town so special and investigate how change has affected the community at large and how people remember their town in years gone by. Very often I can walk up the street and I can visualise, like, oh yes, I'm by Mrs Trout's fish and chip shop now. Oh yeah, that's where Mr Fuller used to live. He fought in the South African War. And you, you can visualise certain uh, parts of the street where you know certain people lived and it triggers off memories, you know. Next to us, Romain's Yard, there was little houses. There was Orange Grove and Lemon Grove. And so you just had the front and an alleyway and there were these little cottages behind. I came from Cambridge where I'd been studying. It was a bit of a culture shock really to come to Devizes because it was such a small place. <laughs> and it didn't seem to me that very much was going on here, but uh, I, I got used to it and I soon settled down. I found lodgings on the, um, though on the green to start with, before going to uh, the Castle Hotel that was then run by a wonderful chap called Billy Gould and his wife Dorothy, who were really rather super people. But it's such a friendly place. You can't walk down the street without seeing somebody you know. It's the fact that it's a small place and so you're always meeting people you know and having a chat and exchanging news. Like most young people, you have this itchy feet and I did go off hitchhiking abroad and this sort of thing, but uh, I soon came home. 